Hi, I'm John Stevens. This is Matt Russell. And this is Pod Have Mercy. This is is Pod Have Mercy. So we are here and we are joined by our wives. So um, why don't you both introduce yourselves as our wives? (laughs) Because oh. apparently, Jeff my name said, is Stephanie Stevens. There's been I'm a your lot wife. of a lot of requests for our wives to be on the podcast. So, why don't you You're introduce yourselves and tell people a little bit about yourself? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Oh, no. <laughs> just to be kind and to earn brownie points. No, uh, so Michelle <laughs> Russell, and a um, couple things about myself. I married Matt in 1995, <laughs> and uh, we've been going on adventures pretty much ever some since. Good. Some good, some not good. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Um, usually two things are happening for me at any one time, and they're usually, um, you know, fall under the category of both and. Like, I'm both grateful to be a mom of three boys, and I fantasize about getting in the car and driving for a really long time and coming back, you know. In three or four years. In three or four years. When they're grown. (laughs) When they're grown. (laughs) So so I'm a mom of three boys, and I both love that and find that excruciating a lot of the time. I noticed in that ser- that scenario that you're driving away, and I'm not in that car with you. Well, <laughs> did you hear that, John? I well, somebody's got to watch the boys. Oh, yeah. Someone's <laughs> got to stay with the boys, and I feel like you are well equipped uh, yeah. for that job. Uh, okay. I I grew up in Washington State, and I love all forms of water. Um, went to true. college in Seattle. Went to seminary in 1992 to study marriage and family therapy. And I was a licensed counselor in Texas for 15 years or so. And uh, now I'm just mom during COVID. And the humans that I live with are at my house all day, every day, mostly. And I find that difficult. I, I don't know if anyone else finds that difficult. She says with deep difficult. gratitude. I don't know if anyone else finds that difficult, but I find it difficult that my boys are always at home. I don't know if I'll go back to work. I think about it sometimes. And I have a friend that I would work with if I chose to work again. Um, but maybe it's a byproduct of being a mom that I sometimes can't imagine doing anything in the real world again. Um, but I think... Maybe after they launch that phase, that way of thinking will change. So I'm Stephanie Stevens, and I'm married to John. <laughs> I'm I think sorry. since we're doing this episode yeah. with wives, they probably figured well, you said <laughs> you're married to one of us. Introduce myself. <laughs> it's, my, it's my sister wife. <laughs> I'm just, that's it. <laughs> I enjoy tennis. Play okay. a lot of tennis. Does John play with you? No, okay. John enjoys golf, mm-hmm. and I don't think he would enjoy golf if I played golf, and <laughs> I probably wouldn't enjoy tennis. <laughs> <laughs> tennis. We do play what we call family tennis sometimes, okay. and that means John and Maddie get to make up their own rules. <laughs> if you call family tennis before the ball bounces twice you can let it bounce two or three times. And typically it doesn't matter if it bounces in. But for some reason those rules don't apply to me and Sarah. But anyway, we (laughs) do enjoy an occasional family tennis, but it can be exhausting when they get four or five bounces and we have to play the entire court. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah. 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 It's quality time, good quality time. We haven't played played family tennis in a long time. But anyway, um, I do enjoy the church i enjoy bible study i enjoy hanging out with friends mm. um i you were talking about going back to work you know our kids are out of the house and i just feel a special call in, se- that in this season of life that um i just want to be home to support john mm. you know ministry um mm. is a blessing and a curse sometimes you know it 
it um, can steal a lot of things from you. And so I want to be home and present for him. And a lot of times when I would work, um, I think that was exhausting for both of us. So it seems to be more life-giving for us, for me to be home and to be supportive. Is that a fair way to say that? Yeah, you keep me mentally stable. Well, I don't know about that, but... Um, thank God. Well, thank you. But anyway... <laughs> but I, thank you, Steph. <laughs> but I also feel like, you know, with the kids being out, you know, wouldn't be a bad idea to get a job and have mm. a little something else to do, but, but I do. I enjoy playing that role of support, trying to keep you, what'd you, what'd you call it mentally? Stable. 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 <laughs> yeah. right. Sane. Just kidding. And you've got a daughter that's getting married so too. We do. Our oldest daughter, Sarah, is getting married in April. Yeah. Are they getting we'll married in, in Texas or? They're actually going to get married uh, at our former church on St. Simon. Georgia. In the beautiful St. Simon's Coast. Yeah, so it's that would great. be fun. Have yeah. fun with Destination fun. wedding. I saw those in their engagement pictures, and they're just yes. beautiful. We, can no, talk yeah. about, we didn't talk about how y'all met. We could, do you want my yes. story, or do you want to hear that from I would love to hear both of your stories. We'd like the real story. We'd like the real story. <laughs> the like real the story. story. <laughs> well, um, we met at Fuller Theological Seminary at a square <clears throat> dance. Wow. And um, I this... I always thought that Matt, when I look at him, I was like... <laughs> Kind no, of square he did kind not of dance. Uh, uh, truth be told, he sort of um, casually strode in uh, uh, about, I don't know, halfway through. Late, yeah, okay. With good. his Birkenstocks, <laughs> army pants. I still own this sweatshirt because I'm not that nostalgic, but in this case, um, this blue Gap sweatshirt and an earring. And I just thought, wow, he's pretty cute. Like as a, as an evangelical, you're not taught pickup lines. You're taught, hey, do you want to go to church? Kind of stuff. That's that's your pickup line. Hey, would you like to go out you know? and hand out pamphlets at the yeah, would, you, would you like to go convert people with me? <clears throat> so, <laughs> would you like to be my prayer partner? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's yeah. yeah. That's that like boom, chicka pow pow. That's code. That's like, yeah. So no, so we met, and we met. he was adorable, and. The very next morning, so he suggested that night that we get together with a group of friends and go to Venice Beach. And um, when he showed up in his Volkswagen Cabriolet, hmm. um, I jumped in the front Which seat. is a really sweet car in the late in 80s. In 1992. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was great. And so like I was from the like Aha or something, the band or so you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so so the rest was. You know, sort Fairy of fairy tale romance. Um, more no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. No. It was more like we were friends for a we couple years. Mm, we got in a small friends. group together. Everybody in our small group ended up kind they of did marry off, pairing off one it, another, mm -hmm. and we were the last people standing. In, in well, sense. everybody's paired off, and it's well, just me and you. <laughs> I guess that means it's you so, and me, babe. Let's go. We're not Calvinists or anything, but I think we're supposed to be together. <laughs> It's so weird that COVID hit when it did, um, because I think we'd been here about six weeks. Yeah. And then everything was shut down for the last, how many months has it been? Six months. Mm -hmm. So I've been sitting in um, the sanctuary the last two Sundays, and I love it. It's, you know, I, I really feel like it's been one of the biggest gifts in my adult life. Just... We've moved a lot. We've had a lot of adventures. We've left a lot of friends and friendships and communities behind. And so to come back 20 years later, um, is it 20? Yeah. It just feels right, you know. Um, John and I were talking about it last week at lunch, and I just, it just feels like I feel so blessed to be like on the staff and in the position I'm in and doing what I'm doing, you know, and serving under John just feel it's, there's like a rightness about it. And I just think, thank you, God, you know? Awesome. So. so I actually felt called to be a pastor's wife. It was something, um, early on, I think I was in high school and wow. I had a girlfriend, we were at a little camp and she asked 
she said, you think you could ever marry a preacher? And it was just like God spoke to my heart. And I said, yeah, I actually think I will. You know, it was just kind of one of those things where huh. it wasn't like this audible voice or anything. It was just kind of God spoke to my heart at that time. And it was so it was something that it's not like I hung out at seminaries looking for one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, <laughs> trolling for husbands. Yeah. But um, AKA Asbury College. Right. right? Go ahead. But, oh, continue. but for me, you know, there were a lot of different seasons in our, our marriage where um, it would have been really easy to make other choices. Um, and for me, it was, I, mm. it was affirmation that I was called to this as well. You know, it would have mm. been really easy for me to encourage him when he wanted to get that dual law degree and when he wanted to get out and do several other things at several other times in our ministry. But, you know, for me, I, I felt like it was a, a life I was called to as well, and it was easier for me to encourage him to That's stay right. in it for the long haul because God called me for this life as well. Mm. Mm. So, Which is why I can't leave. Yeah, you're in Hotel Pride California so times. <laughs> This keeps reading me back, back in. <laughs> I would not have said that marrying a pastor was something I wanted to do, but I did get a degree from a seminary, <laughs> and I found... You're going to go to McDonald's. You're going to buy hamburger, baby. <laughs> I think I... I, I think um, <clears throat> I would never regret, regret marrying Matt. <laughs> That's on tape. <laughs> I don't regret marrying Matt. And um, he would seem like the least likely pastor of the group, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think I was attracted. So, no, I mean, the role wouldn't work for me in a small community. Number one, I am not musical in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I cannot sing, and I can definitely not play the piano. But um, but I love theology. I love to talk about theology. I like to reflect on um, spiritual well-being alongside of emotional and relational well-being. So I care a lot about those mm -hmm. um, things, and I think that's one of the ways that we enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. um, I loved when Matt um, did his PhD because it gave us a chance to step out of um, the community that he had built here even though we loved it um, I think it gave him the chance and us as a couple to reset about boundaries and bottom lines mm -hmm. like yeah um, I don't think when we left we had enough boundaries around our time mm -hmm. Um, and it's hard, it was hard, I found it hard to say like, no, I think that's a really bad idea that you do a wedding, a funeral, a hospital visit, and a sermon on Saturday. Like I found like that difficult mm. to say like, no, I would rather we spend time doing this. So, uh, so we got that chance when we were at Tech and then we got that chance when we were in England and those were great years for our family because it helped us reset mm -hmm. and reprioritize yeah. and to just grow and to grow in acceptance and grow in um, how we saw ourselves and what we are responsible for and what we're not responsible for yeah that's a long answer a lot of times people think I do have a seminary degree and that I'm checking over all his sermons and that he's, you know, rehearsing for me and I don't I, I don't understand that, but a lot of people come up to me and ask me about things. Yeah. Like I mean, we do talk about a lot, you know, but you're certainly well, not like asking inside me workings, first. you know, what do you think about? Yeah. The denominational whatever or she's, that she's got all this inside information. Uh, yeah. She yeah. does have a lot of inside information, but usually not about anything <laughs> like that. Right. No. I think the I think the thing too is, you know, we've the previous generation, the generation before us or the generations before us, there was a role, an expectation of mm -hmm. a pastor's wife, it was a vocation. 
And so the expectation mm -hmm. was you're going to head a UMW and you're going to do this and you're going to be on, mm -hmm. be there and greet everyone. And you're going to go with him to pastor to visit, you know, it was very gender role based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to go with your husband to the hospital and you're going to cook a meal and take it to the couple that had a baby or whatever. And, you know, my, my philosophy is always like, God called me to ministry. Shepherds be married to me and Chapwood or any other church hired me and paid me they don't pay her now if they want to pay her you know she'll be glad to <laughs> visit and bake casseroles or whatever else like that but i've never i've never asked stephanie to say hey it's expected that you have to do this it's like you find what you're passionate about what you want to do you yeah. do that if you want to do it if you don't then don't yeah that reminds me of all like those. the podcast. She really wanted to do this. Really, I didn't. She was asking force her to do. When this. am I going to be? <laughs> no, that reminds me. Don't you remember when we first married? Um, we did have classes. Did Did you have to do anything like this, or was this just oh, something we're going in way Georgia? Back. That's the this is way back on what on how to be a pastor's wife. Um, serious? Like you know, we're from South Georgia. Like what China to set out and wow. how to take care of your silver pieces that seems more and how to a set a southern means. hospitality. No, this was yes. like the district superintendent's really? wife and we would did. have the pastor's wives and at that time. They were retreats. wives. We and they do a retreats. retreat. The spouse's like retreat yeah, was like this kind that. of stuff. Mm -hmm. it was like how to entertain church it. members in the parsonage. Wow. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe I was just, um, I was a PK for mm -hmm. sure. That was my role as a child. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of assumptions around that and expectations. So I think that's part of my yeah. um, aversion mm -hmm. to now, like I love Matt and I have done things together. We've taught at Chapelwood and we've, um, you know, done things for marriage. And we, we had a Sunday school here like 20, years ago that we loved and some of our closest friends came from but but that was because that i loved that and i was interested in it mm -hmm. not because i ever felt like there was an expectation mm -hmm. so i think you're right but wow china what china to set out <laughs> yeah. i've forgotten about that china. i bet that was i would love to hear about that class i might still have some paperwork on that somewhere i, might I mean just from a recipe just book to enjoy hearing about your experience <laughs> Like, can you remember anything else from that, that, uh, that class? Well, it was so foreign to me because I, you have to understand when John and I married, what, I was 22. And these ladies that were teaching these classes were like 60. my grandmother's age. Wow. You know, they were significantly older. And wow. so it's like, it was just like some, you know, I was fascinated by all the little pictures of the women because, you know, they wore aprons. And I was like, <laughs> oh, cute. You know, look like something from the 50s, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was just completely foreign to me yeah. and i did you ever host an event where you put those skills into action no well, like you'd have to have a, no a, a i'm, I'm all it. about a dixie parsonage. and you no, know but plastic it's like, dixie, but, dixie, cups. dixie cups no but when you have like when you live in a parsonage mm -hmm. we were in that kind of transition period when the all the when i came into ministry in the early 90s uh it was starting the, the ones that were retiring, think about it, they had That's been right. 40 years in ministry, they so they started in the 50s, in the 50s yeah. right? <clears throat> so <clears throat> there was still an expectation. Again, in South Georgia, tends to be a little bit behind, maybe yeah. other and places. they didn't work. I was working. Yeah, these spouses didn't work. You know. You know so, and <laughs> Stephanie worked, and but they would say, okay, well, at Christmas, if you're in a parsonage, you have to have an open house for the, the church members expect there to be an open house. We did at the do that several times, and that was yeah. always fun. <clears throat> and so you have to open your house up uh, for all yeah. Sunday afternoon for people just to come and stand around, and you have to have the women will all all the little women committee of the parsonage. And I hate to say not sound like that, but that's the way it was. Yeah. And they all love. They want to help you come decorate, and they want to help you come <laughs> do all this. So they're in your house for like the week before, and then they bring all the pedophores and the sandwiches, and they just hang at your house all day. And here you are getting up, you're preaching, you know, and you have to be there and be on all day till like six or seven o'clock at night. And then even after like the time is over, no. I'm putting this on me now instead. Yeah, of you. <laughs> I'm like, it was really I'm hard so on John. Hard. I'm like, and they just want to stand around and talk about. Have you thought about this bookshelf and these books being over here? Because I really think that would work. And I'm I'm thinking how worn out I am. I didn't even think about poor Stephanie. I was like, I can't go hide from these people. But I mean, it was an expectation. 
You know, parsonage committee meetings used to be in the parsonage. I grew up in a parsonage. Yes. Yeah. And the only experience I had uh, one time in Cambridge, one of the years we were there, um, I hosted a little Christmas gathering of all the ladies. And I have to say, I loved every minute of that. But for me, a party is enjoyable. The bringing it together, setting it up, putting it out, and then like I pretty quickly want to disappear and do dishes in the kitchen. Yeah. Because just think about standing a party, around Think fills about a party that a bunch of little old ladies. Well, these were the, the ladies the old, from no, his church. They came and said, we're having a party at your house and you're going to host it. Yeah. And we're going to get the there time. early and stay there late. And we're going to tell you how to do it. And we're going to direct you. And we're going to critique you And it's going to be basically the their party. We're going to criticize how well you keep house. Yes. Oh, my God. I would have found that extraordinary. It was difficult. very stressful. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want that. That's a different generation, though, right? It was. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, like, does that exist in smaller towns than it does in I bigger towns? I think it towns? still does. I think it still exists. Yeah. For I, sure. I, it, it still exists, but it's not like it was it was it was assumed i think back mm -hmm. then which is why you know when she would go to a district meeting or the spouse's retreat i mean that was what mm -hmm. there were that was it was, it was the there were sessions on all this stuff yeah, yeah. you know Can we pick a couple of these questions just to toss around just only the appropriate ones <coughs> oh thank you um, but if there's a, one that is interesting to y'all, we can kind of throw it around. Oh, wow. Would you rather have nosy neighbors I love that one. or noisy neighbors? Ooh. The, the first neighbors, do you remember our sweet first neighbors? On Knox? And, yes. In Dublin, don't you remember Sweet Dot came and knocked on the door about maybe 1 o'clock one Saturday and said, Honey, y'all okay? Your blinds are still closed. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> we were, you know. Newly married, twenty three years 22, old. Twenty three years old. Well, yeah. Don't don't get the wrong impression. We were probably still like I mean, we were, sleeping we were, at yeah. one o'clock yeah, on the yeah, Saturday. Right. Still, yeah. you know, just but getting up in the morning. Are y'all okay? She was concerned. Honey, for she us. was a concerned neighbor, Those, which was really sweet. But that was blinds are still closed, my darling. First introduction <laughs> okay to fishbowl in life and ministry. Wow. You know, and yes, ma'am, we're, okay. we're okay. We're yeah, okay. We're good. <laughs> anyway, do you, how about you guys? Would you rather um, have nosy or? Or have you ever had a noisy neighbor? We did. Our uh, <laughs> our first year of marriage, we lived in this uh, oh, wow. beautiful home in Pasadena, California. In fact, it we was in, room. in Father of the Bride. The, he, Steve Martin was driving down El Molino and you could see this house where we lived. So for $100 a month, we had our own room and bathroom. Um, and we had this amazing view of the foothills and a pool in the backyard. Wow. So, and it's actually where we had our wedding reception. So the $100 a month let us spend a lot of money on therapy, which <laughs> is maybe why we're still married. <laughs> um, spent more money on therapy than rent. We <laughs> spent hundreds of dollars, like mm. so much more. But our first, our first but neighbors were Remember loud. those neighbors and they would they throw parties, parties, all, the parties time. all the time. So. I don't know. I've never had a nosy neighbor. Yes, we did. Woo. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they well. Were, they were mean and nosy. That was Aww. different. I don't know. I'd, I'd really rather have, have a little bit of a nosy neighbor than a loud nosy. neighbor. Because the no nosy neighbor, you could kind of mess with a little. That would be my passive-aggressive side coming out. <laughs> you know? Yes. That could be kind of fun. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Would you rather always be gossiped about or never talked about? Ooh. Ooh. That's never easy talked me. about. Yeah, never talked about. Never. Absolutely. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, easy for me. Never talked about. And I get gossiped about always I was anyway say, now. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I already know what that feels like. So I'd like to try the other one. The never. <clears throat> Would you rather always speak your mind or never speak again? Oh my gosh, wow. that's like, it's like liar, liar. yeah, that's wow. what I was trying to figure out that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that one's easy for me, too. Never speak. No, always speak my mind because I already, you already pretty do. much already yeah. do that. Yeah. So I'd, and I guess I don't speak much anyway, so it works out well. <laughs> Would you rather be fluent in all languages or be a master with? Uh, yeah, Sorry. master of every musical instrument. Oh, mm. wow. That's a good question. Wow. What do you think, Stephanie? I think I'd rather be the master of every musical instrument. Hmm. 
I think that that's an extrovert introvert question. Mm. Ah. So I'd rather be fluent in all languages. Me too. Mm. How Me about too. you, Michelle? Do you have one? I think I would have to choose the musical instrument. I would. I would rather be fluent in just one musical instrument. That would be. <laughs> yes. Master that would be one. nine. And maybe one language. I'd like to <laughs> one language is fine. <laughs> I'd like to just be fluent in the English. Yeah. That would be good too. <laughs> just give me one. That would one be of each. <laughs> if y'all, do y'all do date nights or do you, I, would you rather stay in? Ooh, that's an easy one with three boys. Like, Go out. Get out. Get yeah. out. It's really nice to be home alone without them, okay, you know, because mm-hmm. they're kind of getting the age where they'll kind of go and the house is quiet. But it's sometimes when they know. sleep till two, it feels like we're at home alone. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. when the, your morning is your date morning. That's right. Mm-hmm. I, I like to go you? out. I, I, maybe it's context. I think I've always liked to go out mm. of, on a date. But like the last six months since COVID, yeah, staying in, I I would just like to get out. Mm-hmm. We're kind of foodies. Yeah. Well, I think I am. I know you are too. We kind of like, but like, dude, in Houston, the reason I've gained 15, 20 pounds since I moved here is El Tiempo. Oh yeah. Oh. You know, Tex Mex anywhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just name any place: Lupe, Guadalajara, Galantes, <laughs> Chavez, Chile, Cyclone Anias. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. It just whatever it is. We went to a new place the other day up on Gessner. Have you been to Chavez? No, Gessner and what? Yeah, it's like uh, up north of Hammerley. Pastel guy up on the. Well, yeah, it's it's oh, up, it's up a pretty, pretty good sad. Rate. It's good. It's very reasonably it priced. Like, and Sarah, Mexican Sarah restaurant went spot. with us, and she goes, "Well, is it good?" And I was like, "It's Tex Mex in Houston. It's going to yeah, be it's going to be nice. awesome." Yes. I mean, yeah. I haven't like, had bad Chavez. Chavez. Yes. Huh. It's it's good. It's, we we figured out a new date. Um, getting up early on Saturday morning and driving to Galveston, and just putting our chairs at the edge of the uh, ocean and sitting or walking. Mm-hmm. And that's been really fun. that two or three times the last couple of months. That's been great. Yeah. I would choose that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be even better if we could stay the night and someone else would make sure our kids were still alive by the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> but... Well, if they're sleeping till two, you can pretty much they're do pretty two good. thirds of that date by the time <laughs> yeah. you're home. They I just know. They but, don't even know we've left. But it's our 13-year-old. He'll get up and start a fire somewhere. So that's still, <laughs> we're still needing to. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm serious. We have to kind of, <laughs> he needs the low jack on him. <laughs> and now our middle son has started his like career as a uh, jeweler, and he's doing an apprenticeship. And so lately we've been buying all the things around that all the tools and so now there are like tanks of map gas and oxygen and there's this Flammable thing that creates a really intense flame so Ooh. um there you go so we're gonna need to do some thinking around that before we leave for long periods of time yeah. but he's trustworthy but if a 13 year old gets a hold of that yeah but gabriel there's gonna be a bomb go off somewhere <laughs> we have a friend that used to watch gabe when he was little and um he couldn't find him one day this was when we were in lubbock and he went out to the garage and he found gabriel sitting in his minivan um and when pat opened the door gabriel looked at him and said i break stuff pap he was just in his garage breaking things breaking and then he things. got into his minivan and there's just things broken all over and his, and that's been and that's, that's kind of his, his i break stuff pap it's that's never changed oh wow yeah. that's been his are girls yes. different yeah, they, yeah. yes girls different very much really yeah i i very think much. having girls i always tell people guys that are friends of mine that have had boys i think if you have boys there's something as a man i think it kind of makes not everybody but there's something like the guys that I know that are my peers that have had boys, seems like their testosterone level's a little higher as men. Mm-hmm. And the guys that I know have had girls seem to be like, it's not as high. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just like dads of girls tend to be able to talk things out more because that's how girls process. You know, you got to talk <sighs> things out. Whereas dads of boys, you know, get on the floor and fight it out. Yeah, but you have to talk a lot when you have girls. Really? You have to talk a lot. Yes. It's okay. It's good. Well, they go through seasons where they don't want to talk like anyone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like, and the thing is like the drama for the the boys that I've known, friends that have had boys, 
you know, they break things. They break their arm. They break yeah. the furniture. They break the vase. They break the dog. Whereas <laughs> girls, it's just emotional breaking. It's like, you know, so yeah, your son comes home and he's been in a fight and he's got a black eye and it's good. Your daughter comes <laughs> home and she goes to a dark place because someone made fun of her uh, or one of her friends didn't include her. Yeah. So it gets, girls can be very mean. Guys work it out. Boys, I think, can just hammer it out, but girls mm -hmm. could be really mean. Is that don't you think? I I would agree. What's well, it like raising ad like when you're, like raising adolescent girls like that mm -hmm. phase? What was? Mm. <clears throat> I laughed during those years. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm okay. Uh, I I feel like we were really blessed. I mean, the mm. girls they're great girls. They have never really resented their role as preacher's kids. You know, they've loved being a part of the church. They've made relationships and connections through the yeah. church. You know, I mean, they were both working here at, at Chapelwood. Yeah. They love Chapelwood and they love their dad. And, you know, they feel like, um, you know, God's calling them to certain purposes as well. Mm -hmm. You know, both of them still are very involved in their own ministries and their own lives. So, I mean, I feel That's really cool. blessed that, um, God has their hearts and they're mm -hmm. pursuing him. I mean, that's just a complete and it, blessing. And they know how to work you too. So Maddie at, at OU will say, what'd you do on Sunday? She said, well, I listened to you online. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm oh, putting a hundred dollars in your money. bank yes. account. Yes, she needs money. She knows yeah. how to. Your Venmo account is <laughs> now full. I was like, that's so sweet. How much yeah. money do you need? <laughs> that's what I wonder. Like, like I mean, it's great being a family of boys. I say as a boy, um, but also like, there's occasionally I've like, I had a sister, and I kind of wonder, what well, would I like to throw some girl energy into yeah. this? You know. Um, I, I want, and I, I know that Michelle would probably appreciate that, appreciate that too. Okay. You know, it's I like being a boy mom. Um, probably just good to accept what you've been given, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I do feel boy trapped sometimes, um, especially during COVID. And but I'm I'm loving that they get that as they get older, that I. I need to be thoughtful about um, what I continue to volunteer to do for them versus mm. um, stepping back. And so I will say I really loved being a mom when they were little and I was all in and I loved um, I loved those days of just being able to pick them up and put them in the car and go ride trains and go to the zoo and the children's museum I and mean, there's so many fun things to do here. So losing that control and getting to decide has been an adjustment. But, mm -hmm. but now I do love the idea that I get to stand back so that they can live into being more, um, more aware of how to meet their own needs, more aware of their environment. Um, so I'm, I'm probably um, finding things to enjoy about this stage too. It's fun to watch what they get into. I, I think you and I are, Stephanie, I mean, I won't put words in, it's almost like she laments them growing up and getting old. I mean, she mm -hmm. appreciates it and likes it, but there's like, she misses like, whereas I'm enjoying seeing them go I to the next think. step and the next stage. I, I do miss them being little, mm -hmm. just Maybe. the nostalgia of that, yeah. but I yeah. do love who they are, and I love yeah. the relationship that we have with them now. I mean, they're fun to hang out with. I mean, I appreciate yeah. that sometimes they let us hang and out She with always <laughs> wants everybody, like, you know, together. She yeah. wants everybody home. So, she wants see, everybody COVID was really good for me. It was like Christmas every day, and I feel bad saying that because I know it's been no. horrible for a lot of people, but my family was trapped in the house with me, and I loved every minute of it. And they, I, I had to get up and cook for them it all was day. Like and they Christmas had to like it. They had to eat my food and they That's couldn't great. go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you're mine. <laughs> and you guys, but you guys watched a lot of movies together and played games oh, yeah, together. Yeah, we watched and, a yeah. series of movies every Karaoke. Night. I mean, we had a lot of things. It was. It's so. like, you know, that little, That's great. for us, the Christmas, <laughs> so in ministry, when you're in ministry, Christmas Eve, of course, you can never go anywhere. So you, Christmas Eve, you're working. And so Christmas Day, we never really traveled. Our family either could come to us or mm -hmm. we just wouldn't see them. And we would prefer not to see them, actually. So 
that week between Christmas and New Year's always for us was we're at home, we're locked down, we're not really going anywhere. And it was every day in your pajamas, watching movies, mm -hmm. playing games. Watching yeah. home movies. Yeah, re-watching old home mm -hmm. movies of the kids when they were little. Mm -hmm. So we still do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they still like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think probably it's the same as, as y'all. I mean, it's Christmas Eve is kind of locked down. And so usually mm -hmm. we'll pick a service to go to as a family. And then um, usually I'm shutting it down at the end. Oh, um, I didn't. You didn't get the memo. You're doing all Christmas Eve services <laughs> this year. Papacitos fajitas are a Christmas tradition yeah. at our house. I, um, I mean, as soon as I realized, like, I'm not Martha Stewart. I'm never going to be Martha mm -hmm. Stewart. I don't need to keep trying. Then, the like, the more practical I got about how to enjoy our time as a family, yeah. the better it was. I think early on, I um, I was trying to you know, braised tender, tenderloin on a 10 inch pan. Um, that didn't work. And um, that's a shout out to my friend, Marilyn, who was at Chapelwood and she tried to work, work me through that, talk, my, talk me through it. But um, no, I think traditions, the tradition in a pastor's family is just good to let go of the expectations. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it is what it is. It is. Because Christmas Eve, it's like, especially coming here, you have services oh. from, mm -hmm. you know, we get here at noon and we get home at 12.30 a.m., <laughs> yeah. one in the morning maybe. And so our tradition is, I mean, they'll come to one service, but I'm you up here. The yep. And then we get home and then we watch. I, I can't go to bed. So I have, have a couple of too. cocktails mm -hmm. and then we watch movies. So we'll watch, Elf. I think every, the last couple of years, <laughs> we get in bed like, Three, Three in the morning. Yeah. What's your? Do you y'all have a go to Christmas movie? Or we rotate. There's Elf, and there's Christmas Vacation, and there's Christmas Story, yeah. and yeah. so it kind of just depends on which one of those we're feeling. How about you? My tradition is uh, you've got mail. Oh yeah. While I wrap gifts, that's oh. my tradition every wow. year. Because you, when you're wrapping gifts, you really do pretty much need to pay attention. And after 25 years, I have you've got mail down, but it's super <laughs> sweet, and yeah. we like Love Actually and mm -hmm. Elf. Love Actually. We like I love Love Actually, yeah. And then we had all the like ones Elf. the kids loved. Yeah. Um, the Polar mm -hmm. Express. Yeah. Fred Claus. <laughs> Gabriel loves anything else. with Vince Vaughn. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think this year I think this year the kids are ready for Bad Santa. <laughs> I think we're in. to Bad Santa. I think they're ready. I think <laughs> it's right and pass. It's, they're all over twenty now. So, all right, it's been fun having our wives here this week. So I think we'll sign off this way. We're the Stevens. And we're the Russells. And this is Pod Have Mercy. <laughs>